I'm Robbie Suave, and I'm joined by Emma Camp. Now, our next clip requires almost no introduction, except maybe brace yourselves. Vice President Kamala Harris was on the Drew Barrymore Show this week. Let's watch. I keep thinking in my head that we all need a mom. I've been thinking that we really yeah. all need a tremendous yeah. hug in the world right now. Yeah. But in our country, we need you to be Mamala of the country. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I know. I, I don't know, Emma, is that <laughs> what the country needs right now? I mean, if she's all our Mamala, does that mean we're all gonna get like thrown in jail for a really long time? For, for minor crimes, <laughs> right? I don't, I mean, I, I, I don't wanna poke too much fun at earnestness, mm -hmm. but there is something about Drew Barrymore's vibe that feels very off to me. Like, she's always, like, making really intense, deep eye contact. It, I, I don't know. I you probably don't even know who Drew strange. Barrymore is. I know who Don't Drew pretend Barrymore to me is. that you do, you young person, you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, this speaks to Kamala Harris's problem, I think, one of authenticity, largely. Or as someone with no real constituency, you know, as you, you alluded to there, she had that long history is actually a pretty tough on crime figure, getting a lot of flack and criticism from our magazine, from libertarians, because um, she was not uh, progressive on criminal justice issues whatsoever, but then that became, which at the time was kind of popular, and it is still in some ways popular, but was did not fit the media moment and the, the national political moment on the Democratic side, so she had to totally reinvent herself in this way that I think, frankly, strikes many Democrats as hollow, not that I speak for them. But. Right, it, I mean, there is something weird to me about this, like, female politicians who, this female politician who, like her or hate her, you know, has this, like, very long record and was this really tough on crime judge where she suddenly has to become, like, a soft and squishy mom. Uh, you know, dare I say, this is not something we typically ask men to do, right? Mm. Like, male politicians who are, like, tough on crime, they can say tough on crime, you know, they can have this, like, strong authority, they don't suddenly have to be like America's goofy dad. Mm -hmm. um, and I almost feel bad for her that she has to pretend to be this like soft, squishy, maternal teddy bear that she's not in the hopes of somehow that getting her more votes. So we argue about this on uh, my other show uh, all the time. I think, Brian uh, I, I, I argue that with, with my co-host, Brianna Dre Gray, I think Kamala Harris will seek the presidency, absolutely wants to be president. I don't know that she will get it um, because, again, she doesn't have this deep reservoir of support, but I absolutely think she wants to be president. What do you think? I mean, yeah, sure. Why? I, I don't believe that anybody that manages to become the vice president doesn't want to become the president. Right. You're like, oh, yeah, I'll be vice president, but the pre presidency, that's too ambitious for me. Uh, of course she does. I agree. It's probably not a good idea. I'm not sure there's that many people that want to vote for her, uh, but of course she's going to try. Yeah. Now, I, you know, whenever it is that Joe Biden happens to hand over the reins. I mean, he, he's done her no favor so far because what, what was she put in charge of? I think it was, wasn't she in charge of the border ostensibly? I think that was a task that was assigned to her. Obviously, that, that, that's I not mean, fixed. That's no one's perception is that fail. that's fixed. Yeah, maybe that's what he was doing. He, he <laughs> hasn't set her up to be, I, I, this is the question. Is he setting her up to be his successor in any tangible way? Is he trying to, you know, pave a road for her where it will be easier for her the way it was for like, uh, it, was, it was obvious that, um, Again, a little before your time. Obviously, that Gore was Clinton's successor, right? Now, in the Dick Cheney didn't want to actually run at the time, and then, uh, and then for Obama, it was really it was Hillary Clinton was set up to be the successor. Joe Biden was explicitly told, "No, this is her show. It's her time. She's waited. She is she is going to kill you if you get in her way of her being president, and we're going to let it happen." Um, that ended up being a disaster because Hillary Clinton's not all that popular and lost the election, whereas where Joe Biden probably would have won and then subsequently did win. Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to uh, her popularity or whether or not she's being set up as Biden's successor, I really just don't feel like I hear that much from her. Uh, she doesn't really feel like she's doing that much. Granted, vice presidents often aren't doing that much, but I certainly don't feel like I'm, I'm getting like subliminal messages that she's supposed to be president. Next, frankly, I don't really know who on the Democratic stage right now is an obvious successor to Biden. Um, I've struggled to think of that. I think certainly that 
was sort of highlighted this time around, how voters were really dissatisfied with the idea of having Biden v. Trump. But there wasn't really an obvious other person, at least in a partisan way, like an, a democratic, a straightforwardly sure. democratic alternative to Biden that emerged. Of course, they didn't really give that a chance for anyone to emerge, right? right. They didn't run a real primary, camp, uh, a series of primaries. They didn't have any debates on the Democratic side. You know, say what you will about the Republicans, which this did end up being just another coordination for Donald Trump yet again. And he didn't participate in the debates, but they did. They did hold debates, and now he's remains popular enough right. with the but, base but to just say, "Screw you guys, I'm going home." Yeah, I mean, but typically the incumbent doesn't really do debates. Typically, right? although this is not a typical. It's not typical to have a candidate that is this advanced in age and showing it. So obviously, on both sides, frankly, right. we're going to have a rematch between two of the two the two oldest and two of the most unpopular people um, in their own parties facing significant unpopularity. In, and then, uh, obviously, with the electorate at large, there are significant numbers of Republicans who wanted some other candidate, and there are plenty of Democrats who actually, e even though they might like Biden or his policies, think just think he's too old to be president again, and then they're confronted with evidence of it on TV every time he opens his mouth. Oh yes, I've never been more glad to live in D.C., where no matter what I do, my vote will not matter. Ah, that's a good point. All right, more of the show right after this.